Hey what's up guys, it is Saiku or Sam here and welcome back to the channel and today I'm very excited to bring you guys a brand new episode of C Sharp Basics in Unity and this is simply because a lot of people have been suggesting me and showing me some great feedback and support on this series and I was actually planning on to canceling it but since I see that you guys are really enjoying these episodes I'm actually going to keep on making them. So if you keep enjoying, which I really hope you do, make sure to click the like button down below to actually show some support on the video and also hit the subscribe button if you want to stay up to tune for new episodes of this series and also some other cool content. And also let us know in the comments if you have any feedback and let's get started with this video. So in this episode we're actually going to take a look on to for loops and what a for loop basically is it's a loop which allows you to have some parameters which are basically what you type inside of the parentheses of a function and the for loop itself is actually a function so it's a built-in function into unity and what a for loop really does is it simply lets you pick a variety of different information from an array, from a list, uh, from a variety of different objects, so that you can actually access their you know, data. So if you have an inventory, it's gonna be useful to use. If you have multiple game objects, you don't wanna really pick manually or let the player pick manually, but you wanna do it backend from the code. You can use for loops, you know, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit also in this video. And speaking of which, we can actually get started with our script here. So what I'm going to do is inside of my scripts folder that I had created from the previous episode, I'm going to right click, create C sharp script. Okay, so we're going to call the script for for loops. All right, and I'm going to drag this onto our main camera in this brand new scene that I created. That didn't work so well. So I just drag it here. There we go. So now I can just open up the script so that we can get started with this gonna take its time and if you haven't watched the previous episode by the way it's going to be linked in the description down below and I'll also put the link for the entire playlist so you don't have to worry about that um, I always remove these two lines or these two voice that are coming with unity by start or by default and now I'm going to create the void that allows us to use every single statement we want to each frame so it's going to be void update there we go and we're going to say, mm -mm -mm. I don't know what, like we could say, I don't want to create a variable right now. I just want to demonstrate for you guys first and foremost how we can use a for loop. So we can actually say for int i is equal to zero. Int i or i is lower than, uh, let's say 10. And then see my column there as well. And then we say, I can actually zoom in a little bit further. There we go. And then we just say I plus plus. So this might look a little bit scary because it looks like math and math is always disgusting. Um, so basically it's really simple when you understand it. What the concept here is, it's basically, we say we're creating a new integer and we're calling the integer, the variable I, basically. And we're already setting I to be zero at the start of the game. And we are also saying I, if, it's, if I is lower than 10, then we're saying if it's actually lower than 10, we're going to plus, plus it every time this for loop runs a loop. So as soon as you have, like let's say if we have print um, hello or hello and then plus I, okay? So what this is going to do, is it's going to check for, it's going to create the integer i, which is going to be equal to zero as soon as, as it gets started. And when we are checking for if i is lower than 10, this means that this function or this loop is going to be run 10 times. If we make this i lower than 20, this loop is going to run 20 times. If we make it 500, it's going to run 500 and vice versa. So it's pretty much the simple contest here. And what I++ plus plus means is basically if I is lower than the number that we enter here, we will plus I by one until it hits this number. So it's pretty much simple logic when you get into it. So you just plus I by one until it gets to 20, which means that it's going to stop because we're obviously running the loop on only until it hits 20, if it's lower than 20 basically. So what this is going to do is going to print hello 
and then the number one time, two times, three times, four times, until 20 times. When it hits 20, it's going to check for I lower than 20 and it's going to say, uh-uh, no, no, it's not, it's not lower than 20, it's actually equal to 20. And this is going to prevent it from loading one more time. And I wanted to demonstrate this for you guys. So we're going to save the script, go back to Unity. We're going to hit the play button. And we're going to open up our console as soon as the game runs. It's going to be a little bit slow here, okay? Oh, there it is. All right, so as you can see, it's running quite furiously. So I'm going to disable the script so that we don't overload Unity. But you can see, hello zero, one, two, three, four, five. It goes up to 19. And the reason is basically when you are creating a for loop, when you are creating a list, you're starting from the programming language one, which is the digit zero. Because indexing always starts from zero, even up to whatever digit you enter. But to prevent it from bugging out, it's obviously stopping at 19 because zero to 19 is 20 steps. So instead of going to, from one to 20, it's just going from zero to 19, and that's for security reasons. So, as you can see, it's printing out quite furiously here, like I said, and this is just a simple demonstration for how for loops work, but I want to be a little bit more advanced with you guys because you're pretty much, I mean, you're probably a better programmer than me, okay? <laughs> I suck at the moment, like I'm literally terrible, okay? Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm going to say mm -mm -mm, public, um game object and then create a bracket okay a square square bracket right after game object and we're going to say mm, we're just going to say like my objects all right so what we're going to do here uh obviously we just created a public game object which is going to be my objects and this is going to be probably like 10 different objects that we're going to create and we're actually going to go to above void update and we're going to create a new void called start. And on start of the game, we're going to say my objects is equal to new game object square brackets and 20, okay? So this is the amount of objects or the amount of elements you want to create for this new variable. And you have to do this so that you load the array itself, or else it's going to throw a error. It's going to be like an index error, I guess. I don't know. I don't remember the exact error, but it's going to be quite obvious. So I'm going to remove the print line because we don't need it anymore. There we go. And now I can either make this manually, like go to Unity and... Mm, it's going to be a little bit, like, way too much. So what we're going to do is I'm going to enter the digit 5 instead of 20 for my new game object and we're going to go back to unity we're going to clear the console like that uh, and you can see the elements have already been created here we don't have to enter the amount here right now because as soon as we start the game it's going to set itself to 5 as you can see um, but basic actually we can actually just set it to um, yeah now that I think of it we can actually remove this void start part because we're not going to enter the game objects from code scratch because I want this to be a little bit basic at least. And instead of my objects in the inspector menu, we're going to set five. Okay. So now we are going to create a new 3D object. It's going to be a cube. And we're going to place it... Uh, let's say we're going to place it there, okay? And let's make it up a little bit. We're going to duplicate this move it down, um, duplicate these two, move them down, and then the last one is going to be duplicated. So we're going to have basically five different game objects, okay? And we're going to highlight them all. We're going to drag them down a little bit so that we have it a little bit more organized. There we go. And now, um, let's see here. I, and I don't actually know what kind of uh, like experimental I want to make, but basically we're going to go to main camera, we're going to unfold four loops, and we're going to drag each object, each cube into their slots. Oops. There we go. This is going to be there. Two left, one left, and there we go. All right. So we're going to rename these cubes, uh, just a cube or my cube. There we go. And let's see. 
So now inside of here, we can actually say uh, 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 my objects dot our square brackets i dot um, we can actually say this print my objects square brackets i dot name. What this is going to do is going to print out the game object's name. And it's going to be the same because we have called every single one of them for my cube. But we can either way create new names for them inside of the inspector, which will take a little bit of time. Or we can say that we are going to create them here. So about the print line, we're going to say my objects i dot name is equal to uh, let's say psyq's cube plus or let's create a meme for this channel uh, like I don't know what to actually say I mean uh, chicken okay this is an official meme for this channel the chicken because I love chicken all right so we're going to set this and then we're going to say plus I and now when we return to the unity uh, or the unity when we return to unity each object is going to be called, or each object is going to change its name from my cube to chicken plus whatever digit it's at actually. So the amount of loops are actually going to be entered for each object, but they are not going to repeat themselves. And when I play the game, you're going to see a better demonstration. As you can see, it starts from zero, goes to one, two, three, and four. Okay, we have four or five chickens. Like it, it literally just tricked me as well. I said four instead of five because it starts from zero. <laughs> wow, what a, what an instructor, right? What a good trainer here. As you can see, we're getting a index out of range exception, which is basically because we never actually created the void start. So if we go here, we say void start, there we go. My objects is equal to new game object five inside of square brackets like we used to do. This is either going to, I think it's going to actually reset the, uh, the fields, which is a bad practice, but we will see. No, it actually didn't, okay. But it's still giving the error though. That's kind of weird. Um, I might have made a mistake here. We'll see. Mm -mm -mm. All right, all right. Oh, it's because we have it, uh, i is lower than 5, or lower than 20. So we can actually remove void start 2, we don't need it right now. So we can go back to Unity, play the game, and it shouldn't give the error now. Yeah, like I thought. Okay, so basically, what I made as a mistake here was, I had this for 20, right? So this means the loop is going to run 20 times, alright? And that means every time it runs, we only have five objects for it to run. And we have set the my objects array to five inside of our inspector. It just has five elements. And when we say we're going to change it by the digit for the amount of loops that have been run already, it's going to reach, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and all these elements that don't exist. And that's why it's going to throw an error. It's going to be like, I can't find the element you're searching for. There is no element. 20 for or 19 for my objects so that was kind of the, the stupid mistake that i made there but it's not a problem because we got the chickens here um all right so that's pretty much it for this video i guess i mean there is a lot more to teach about for loops but i can't really cover up everything because it would take me like two years of video making just for for loops because practically like technically speaking you can actually use for loops for literally everything and that's why i don't want to cover it way too much um, but you can use them for game objects, you can use them for whatever else variable type you want to create. Integers, floats, strings, objects, lists, you know, whatever it is. And this is a practical way of actually saying, you know what, we're going to do uh, simple things, simple tasks for a variety of different objects. Whether it's 100 objects, whether it's, you know, 1000, 1000 may be a little bit too much, but you know, uh, you know what I'm saying. And I want to also show you guys something cool. So if we say we're cutting this off, and we say if i is equal to, uh, let's say 1, then we're going to run this. So now it's going to uh, change the object name as soon as i hits 1, and not any longer. Which is quite obvious, but this is basics tutorial series, so you guys wanted this. <laughs> and you can see that it's only changing this game object right now. 
so that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's just the filler information. But anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know that it was way too simple, but let me know if you want me to clarify something. If you don't understand this specific part, don't be ashamed. Our community is always responsive. So make sure to list your questions down below, no matter how many there is and or how many there are. And with that being said, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed and found it helpful somewhat, even if you're not new to Unity. And if you did, make sure to click the like button down below to show some support. And also let us know in the comments if you have any questions, any feedback, if you want to say chicken or hi. I mean, chicken has become the quite a meme now for the channel, so let's, let's just spam chicken if you have watched this video so far. And also hit the subscribe if you want to stay up to tune for new videos coming soon, especially for new episodes of this series. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the comments. See you guys. Peace out. Yeah, you could be